Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Tonight I've got a treat for you. We are going to be going over two of the top hammer drills on the market today. We're going to be talking about the Milwaukee Fuel Hammer Drill and comparing that to the top of the 18 volt Makita lineup, the XPH-14. So let's get into that today on Tinker with Tools. Alright, so when it comes down to it, you really can do a lot worse than picking either one of these drills from Milwaukee or Makita. Both of them have been out on the market for a little bit of time now, and although Makita now has their 40 volt drill, this one is still a great powerhouse that offers class leading performance and some pretty awesome ergonomics. But how does that stack up to one of my favorite drills of all time, which is the Milwaukee Fuel Hammer Drill. That drill is one that I sought after when I was first starting collecting my tools thought of as kind of the pinnacle of my lineup and although I still do love it I'm open to admit that it may not be the most powerful or the best suited drill for every task but which one of these is going to come out on top of the performance and does either of them compare to the DeWalt drills we tested last week or should you be considering something from Team Yellow versus going for either of these well let's answer that today first let's cover the specs of each of these drills and then we'll get into the testing All right, so for the sake of these tests, the Milwaukee is going to be running on an XC 5.0 battery. We are going to be starting in drill mode on speed two. The battery is fully charged. Makita is going to be running also on the 5.0, and it is also at a full charge starting in speed two in drill mode. All right, so we are going to be starting first with the Milwaukee, driving a five inch Spax screw in three, two, one. Okay, plenty of power. The Makita is very, it feels very big even though it's pretty compact, but it actually is very well balanced and that's something that I really like about it. In three, two, one. All right, now we're gonna move on to the six inch. The Milwaukee going to the six inch on three, two, one. And now the Makita, same test. Three, two, one. All right, so now with the five inch power lag, first with the Milwaukee in three, two, one. Now the Makita in three, two, one. The Milwaukee is nice to use. It, like I said, from an ergonomic standpoint, the compactness really shines through. It's very skinny. That's one thing it has on just about any other drill in this class. The Makita's trigger and controls just seem to be very premium, even against other premium tools. That's something that stands out right away. All right, so first up, we are gonna be driving a six inch timber lock. The Milwaukee, still in speed two, in three, two, one. Obviously slowing down the bigger the fastener, but still doing a good job. Now the Makita, six inch timber lock, one, two, three, go. All right, once again, no drama, nothing trying to really rip out of my hand even. Now we're gonna go with the eight inch. First with the Milwaukee in three, two, one. All right, the Makita in three, two, one. Okay, we did get some cutouts there but it obviously still did it on speed two and even with the cutouts it still did a pretty decent time um obviously i think on that test the milwaukee's going to take it all right so that's the end of our driving test overall it feels like the milwaukee is faster but if i'm being honest the makita is nicer to use let's go ahead and get this all taken out and then we will get over to the drilling rig and go through the five drilling test all right we are now going to be going with the one inch Bosch Daredevil bit. Uh, for the remainder of the drilling test, we are just gonna put the auxiliary handles on just to have them there. Makes the drill easier to handle. And if you have it, why not use it? So in speed two, on in three, two, one. Made quick work of that. All right, 
Makita now with the one inch Bosch Daredevil in speed two, in three, two, one. We're now gonna move on to the spider one inch uh, boring bit. Um, we are still gonna go in speed two until we induce a cutout and then we will go down to speed one. All right, on three, two, one. That went through effortlessly. <laughs> it seriously barely even induced any vibration into the tool. All right, and now the Makita going with the same one inch boring bit on three, two, one. Both of these one, both of these tools just feel effortless at this point. All right, for these next three tests, we are gonna be going into a pressure treated four by four. Okay, on three, two, one. Drilled through like a dream, way to go. Now the Makita, same test in three, two, one. Okay, we are going to count those times, but based on the fact that the Makita was cutting out on the next test, we are gonna be going down to speed one. All right, so we are still going to be in speed two with the Milwaukee. Uh, I can't stress enough, start using your auxiliary handle when you get up to this point. Okay, going with the Milwaukee, inch and a half spider bit on three, two, one. Okay, it actually did bind up a few times there. We are just gonna keep the clock running on those. Um, and we'll just go with it. It was able to do it, uh, much like the Makita was with the inch and a quarter bit. So now we will be going with the Makita, like I said, in speed one because of those prior cutouts. Okay, on three, two, one. So it was able to do it, relatively drama free. Obviously with a bit that big, you're drilling a massive hole. Okay, final test. Both tools are gonna to be in speed one. Uh, this is going to be an inch and three corners Irwin speed bore in three, two, one. Well, compared to the inch and a half, that Irwin bit just, I mean, it's got a lot more cutters and everything. That just really flies smoothly through the wood. I realize it's not the fastest cut in the world, um, but it is able to do it. Final test here with the Makita in three, two, one. Both of them have completed the test. We've made an awful lot of sawdust and wood chips that are gonna be just a joy to clean up. But let's go ahead and go to our conclusions and see what we find. It's a little bit too close to really know who the winner was just from running the test. But if I had to say, I would say that my guess is that the Milwaukee came away with the, the faster time there. Being able to stay in speed two for that extra bit and to perform a little bit better in the bit before without having the cutouts, it obviously I think is going to benefit it and probably lead to a faster time there. In the driving test as well, the Milwaukee did feel like the faster tool and I think that's going to benefit it slightly as well. When it comes down to it, I don't think the Makita, that means the Makita is a slouch, on paper, it's actually the more powerful and the faster drill. And I think if we were doing some concrete testing, you might see it manifest there of being able to get through some stuff a little bit faster 
when it came to actually using the hammer drill function. When it comes down to which tool that I enjoy using more, I actually think that goes to the Makita. The combination of having a slightly better grip, and I use the term slightly there, I actually really like both grips, but a slightly better grip, an incredible trigger with great control, and just an insane balance fill. When you look at these two tools side by side, one looks smaller, but the way that the tool is balanced matters, and the Makita just has really nice balance, especially when using it in a top-down fashion. And so I think from a, from a standpoint of which one was nicer to use, it's going to be the Makita. Um, even when you got the auxiliary handles in there, the Makita just felt a little bit more smooth, and I think that comes down to what Makita focuses on. They're not necessarily going to be the most powerful or the fastest in terms of raw performance, but they are just nice tools to use, and that does matter, and I think that's something that we should consider as we're picking out tools. Now, we did suffer two different issues during the test, or two things of note. First off, with the Makita, when I was trying to remove the one inch uh, Bosch Daredevil bit, I actually did have it get stuck in the chuck. It took about two or three minutes. I even had to Google some stuff. I didn't find anything that would alarm me with that chuck, but it did get stuck. Um, I don't think it's going to be a long-term issue. I've never had the problem before, and in the remainder of the testing, I didn't suffer any other issues. So I think it may have just gotten stuck in there in a slightly off angle or something like that but it is something to note. Now the problem I would note with the Milwaukee is just the heat dissipation. Um, as I was putting the tools or getting the tools kind of cleaned off the workbench, putting some of the bits and the things that we drove in and that sort of stuff away, I did notice there was more heat coming out of the Milwaukee. Now it makes sense to me. It is a smaller package. It has less ventilation um, overall between the two drills and just being smaller with the, with the motor more tightly housed and maybe even being a smaller, albeit just as powerful motor, there is, isn't enough room for that heat to dissipate. Right back on the motor, even about five minutes after the testing, it was still sitting at 110 degrees, whereas at the exact same time with the Makita having run last was at 89 degrees. And so in terms of, if you're gonna be really pushing the, each of the tools hard, I think in terms of heat and heat alone, I think it's probably going to reach its thermal limits a little bit after what the Milwaukee is. And so that's just something to consider as you're using it. If you're doing this with light duty task or even just doing an occasional heavy duty task and not repeated driving of really large fasteners or really big or drilling big holes, I don't think you're gonna run into an issue with it. So when it comes down to it, which of these would I recommend? I think you're gonna be fine going with either. I'm team red in terms of my primary tool lineup. If we're talking about any of my secondary tools, that's where I've got my, my money. So if I can only pick one, I would be choosing the Milwaukee just because I like everything else that Milwaukee has to offer on their battery lineup. And I think they are investing more in their 18 volt lineup at this point than what Makita is. Now, people came at me in the comments last time when I said that about the impact driver with Makita. But when it comes down to where they're putting their most focus and most energy, it is going to be in that XGD, XGT 40 volt lineup. And you are seeing most of the development come out of that lineup right now. It'll be interesting if we ever do get our hands on the 40 volt to see how they compare to each other. I know other people have already done those tests, but it's always fun to do it yourself. But it is a great drill. If you're in the Makita platform, or if you just don't like the way the Milwaukee tools work, when it comes to Makita, they have a lot of great tools. I think people tend to forget just how big their 18 volt lineup is and how many tools they have. And they do have some class leading tools, I think there. That Makita impact driver is still one of my favorite tools to use. And I think this Makita hammer drill is going to be one of my go-to drills, especially if I need to do something where the balance is going to be an issue or if I need fine precision trigger control. It's just really nice to use and that counts for something. So which of these would you pick if you could only have one? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like what you saw here tonight, please like and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see anything else I come out with. We're gonna be trying to continue to do weekly videos and maybe even mixing some shorts in there just to kind of give you a taste of what's to come and different things that we're working on. Thanks for watching Tinker with Tools. I'll catch you next time.